Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to become a millionaire fast and easy by completing the Diamond Casino high scores. I'll be running you through everything important that you need to know and which routes are the best and how to make the most money. So on the surface level, the Diamond Casino heist seems like a pretty simple operation, but the more you dive into it, the more you find there are multiple routes in every decision you make is very important. So I'm sure this is going to be pretty self-explanatory, but obviously before you start the Diamond Casino heist, you're going to need to purchase a retro arcade business. And once you've purchased the retro arcade business, you can only get it up and running once you have established the initial setup. This is basically where you have to find like an equipment truck in the world and bring it back to your arcade. And once you've done that, you'll have the ability to start the heist mission. So it's not something that can be instantly done once you purchase the property. So just keep that in mind that there is a little bit of a setup that has to be established. Now, once you've established the setup, the first thing you're going to have to do is scope out the casino. And this is where you will have to scope out two things. You will have to scope out access points and you will have to scope out point of interest. Now, most of these are optional. I think you only have to discover like two or three access points and you only have to discover, I think it's like three or four or five point of interest, but it's in your best interest in order to find all of them. So when it's all said and done, you should have six access points found, the main door of the casino, the side doors, the sewer tunnel located underneath the casino, the roof terrace, the security tunnel garage, and the roof access entrance. And then you'll need to find the 10 point of interest, which are very easy to find. It includes things like a bubble security camera, normal security camera, security guard, the valet, keypad. And then once you actually go into the vault contents mission, you'll be able to access the remaining point of interest through security cameras. They're so easy to get. Basically, all you have to do is turn the camera from left to right, and you will find that you're getting all the point of interest. And you can now see on my board, it says that I have scoped out all POIs and all access points. Now, something that you can do that is optional, but I do kind of recommend, is purchasing the casino model, door security, and vault door. Now, it is a little bit expensive, but this will give you the ability to practice on them so that when you get to the real thing, you'll be good to go. The casino model also helps for finding out all the access points in case you're having trouble locating them yourself. Now, once you've scoped out the casino and the vault contents, you'll now have to make a choice. Which heist do you want to select? So you get three choices. You have the silent and sneaky approach, the big con, and you have the aggressive approach. Now, we'll talk about this towards the end, but essentially, Rockstar gives specific bonuses for each heist. So if you complete the aggressive approach, you get $100,000. If you complete the big con approach, you get $150,000 as a bonus. And if you complete the silent and sneaky approach, you get $200,000 as a bonus. And if you are able to complete all three approaches, you get a $300,000 bonus. So we'll talk about the replayability of these at the end, but based off of bonuses alone, Rockstar deems the silent and sneaky approach the hardest, the big con approach to be a medium effort one, and the aggressive approach probably the easiest. Now once you've selected your approach, you will be taken to another whiteboard where you will now have to select your gunman, your driver, and your hacker, essentially your support crew. And support crew members will require different cuts based on their skill, with the minimum being 3% and the maximum being 10%. So with all three combined, you could either be giving up 13% of your final cut or 29% of your final cut. Again, depending on how much you want in terms of protection or skill services or how little you want. Now, in addition to that, Lester also takes a 5% fee and there is a laundering fee at the very end of 10%. So that means that your total fees at the end of the heist are going to be between 28 to 44%. It's like getting taxed on this stuff. It's crazy. So keep that in mind when you are selecting your crew members that it does start to add up and that you could lose 28 to 44%. 
by the time this thing is all said and done. So after you've selected your support crew, you then have to choose your uh, approach specific preps and then your general prep work. And some of these you will actually be able to skip if you want. So for example, if you find one where there's a pay to skip option, you can have like Lester magically do it. Now doing this will eat into your total profit. As you can see here, they cost upwards of $70,000 for some of the equipment. Some even cost $100,000, $150,000. And for the final one that I did, it cost $200,000. So just keep that in mind there. If you, for whatever reason, want to skip some of them because you're strapped for time or you just don't care, well, you can pay for them, but it will eat into your final profits. So just keep that in mind right there. Now, aside from that, basically all you have to do is fill out this entire board. You basically just have to complete every single prep mission that Rockstar wants you to do. Now, once you've completed all of the prep missions, you will then unlock a third whiteboard, which will be the heist finale. And this will give you the opportunity to essentially start everything and also dictate the plan in which you want to do. And you'll basically have to start from the beginning all the way to the end. So you start with like your entry disguise, and this will all depend on, you know, what you've chosen throughout the preps. You then choose your entrance and your exits. And this is why finding all of those access points and points of entry is going to be valuable because all that sort of stuff helps you along the way. And same with completing all of those prep missions too. It really does help you out along the way. Now, one of the more important things you can decide here is the buyer. So the buyer will determine who you actually sell to at the very end. And there's three types. You have low, medium, and high of the potential heist take. Low buyers will give you 90% of the value, mid-tier buyers will give you 95% of the value, and high will give you 100% of the take. And as you can imagine, low is extremely close, high is very far away from the diamond casino, and if you are in the middle, it's kind of in the middle. And then once all of that is selected, you have to decide the potential take. So as you guys can see there, my potential take for this heist at the start is over $2 million, $2,115,000. But as you can see there, the support crew in Lester's cut is already going to eat into it $549 and $900. And as you guys can see there at the very top, it says my setup cost is free. That's because I'm doing this for the first time. Normally, that would be $25,000. So another cost that you would actually have. And you can also see some of my optional choices as well, like the decoy gunman and clean vehicle. Those prices totaled up to $50,000 as far as how much I ended up paying. And then once that is completed, I'm ready to set the take. And the maximum you can take is 85% for one person, meaning the minimum you can take for one person is 15%. So there's no way to go lower or higher than that. Rockstar basically prevent one person from taking it all. I would say in a perfect world, because the host is setting up and incurring all of the costs, that they would probably take a slightly higher percentage, maybe somewhere around 65%. But I was doing this with my friend Sorty, and I really didn't care all that much. So I just set it equal 50-50, which means that our total player take was going to be $1,565,100. Uh, if we were able to get everything. And I'm just going to say this right now, guys. There is a slim chance that you are going to take everything. These heists are hard. Now, I am not a great player by any means, and I'm sure there are tons of really good players out there, but there are so many variables when it comes to these heist missions. Like, if you accidentally mess up in one part, you know, it'll cause a chain reaction of things to occur. And again, this is just me doing the big con right here. There's other heists that we haven't even gone into yet. Now, they pretty much function the same way. You're robbing the vault. But the point remains is that even if you were to get all of the money, the chances of you getting out with all of it are pretty slim. Because at least in my heist scenario, things got pretty hectic very fast and we took over a million dollars, but by the time we had gotten outside and through all the floors, uh, we had actually burned through about fifty to sixty thousand dollars of that just from bullets hitting the bag itself. So 
Are you going to end up walking away with all of the money? The answer is probably no. And by the time this whole thing was done, we had a sort of difficult time getting out and escaping the casino. I don't know if we had done something wrong with our heist, but we were having a little bit of trouble with it. However, we were able to eventually pass the heist where uh, we took not so much of our final take, but we still ended up completing the heist itself. And that's what happened. And you can see that this is our final heist board here. You can see all the different cuts we had to give out to Lester, Charlie Reed, Christian Feltz, Taliana Martinez, and then you see our cuts at the very bottom. So even though you make it out with a good bit of money, your final take might not be as much as you think. Now, after you've completed your heist, you can return back to your arcade and you can eventually start the heist again. However, there is a little bit of a cooldown period. Now, I'm not sure what this cooldown period is, but you aren't able to start up another heist immediately. And it looks like regardless of what you do, you have to start the heist completely over again. From scoping out the casino to checking out the vault contents to selecting an initial prep, just because you've done it once doesn't mean you're able to get a jump start the next time around. So overall, what is my opinion on the Diamond Casino heist? I think it's a ton of fun. Uh, it's very long as well. Like the amount of prep missions you have to do, it's like a real life heist if you could even compare it to that. I think we spent like maybe 70% of the time on like the actual prep missions themselves and probably only about 30% on the heist finale. Now, I don't know if that's to be expected, but it did take a long time. Now, again, I am not the best. I'm sure with a competent crew, you might be able to tackle this much faster. And so while it was a lot of fun, I don't think the payout was all that worth it, especially for what we got at the end. I was kind of expecting it to be a whole lot more. Because remember, you have to buy the arcade. You have to do all the different setups and preps, and you have to buy all these different upgrades. Now, luckily, there are a lot of fixed costs associated here, like the things that you can buy for your arcade, like the model casino and the vault and the keypad. And the arcade itself is even a fixed cost. So here's the trick and the secret behind the Diamond Casino Heist. You have to do it multiple times if you want it to be successful. And obviously, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And there's also some rewards and bonuses for completing them as well. Like I mentioned earlier, if you were to able to complete all three approaches, you'll get a bonus of $300,000. If you complete the elite challenges for all three approaches, you get $350,000. And if some way you're able to complete the diamond heist on hard without losing a life, you'll get a bonus of $250,000. And there's also a handful of new awards that Rockstar have added in this update that also gives you bonuses along the way of cash and RP. So check out those before you end up getting started as there's some things that you might not have known that you can do throughout the heist that'll get you a little bit more money along the way. But anyways, that right there is how you can become a millionaire fast and easy in Grand Theft Auto Online by completing the Diamond Casino Heist missions it's a wild, wild journey, I will say that, but I think as we start to understand them a little bit more, as players do them over and over again, they will find out what approach is best for them, and they'll start to master that, and it will become a nice way to make money. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully you did enjoy. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Which of the Diamond Casino Heist approach do you think is the best? Is it the big con, the stealthy approach, the aggressive one? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and the Diamond Casino Heist videos that I'm going to be doing here on my channel over the next couple of days and weeks. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work, and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.